Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sax Tuition YouTube channel. My name's Jeremy. So about a year ago, I created a video all about the soprano saxophone, containing the information someone starting out on that saxophone would want to know. And one thing that I spoke about in that video is the difficulty of learning to play the soprano in tune. That's because we're dealing with a smaller instrument, a smaller reed, a smaller mouthpiece, and it's gonna respond very sensitively to even small changes in our embouchure. But make no mistake, tuning, or intonation as we also call it, is something that affects all saxophone players, and it can be a challenge no matter what sax you play. So in this video, I'm gonna show you specifically what you can do to play this saxophone or any saxophone in tune. But before we get into it, if you're just starting out on the saxophone, make sure to check out lesson one of the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. You can watch it for free right here on YouTube, and I've put a link to that in the description down below. So let's get started. Now, first things first, here's a video which I think should be required viewing for anyone starting the saxophone, especially the soprano. But just brace yourself. why I showed it to you is because this is a really interesting teachable moment about playing the saxophone in tune. Because personally, I think there's two important elements at play here. Firstly, it's clear this guy hasn't developed the embouchure control yet to be able to pitch his notes correctly. You see, as you move through the range of the saxophone, your embouchure needs to change with you. This is something that I spoke about in an earlier video I made in the Tone Tip series called How to Play in Any Range. And for those interested, I'll link to that video down below and in the end screen of this video. Now, as a quick demonstration, I'm gonna play a D major scale over two octaves, but crucially, I'm not gonna change my embouchure at all. It's gonna stay locked in place. Let's see what happens. Now, notice as we got up to the higher range of the saxophone, the notes started becoming really, really flat. And hopefully, even with a beginner's ear, you would have heard that for yourself. The solution is to support these higher notes by adding a bit more pressure on the reed with our bottom lip. That's gonna make the pitch a little bit sharper so we can play those upper register notes in tune. But Here's the catch. A common problem that beginners face is actually overcorrection. Most saxophone players will actually find themselves playing sharp in the upper register because they've learnt that they need to support the higher notes to get them out clearly, but they just haven't learned exactly how much pressure to use. Just have a listen to how easily we can manipulate the pitch of a note by using a combination of our bottom lip and our jaw to bend the notes up and down. So how do you know then if you're playing in tune? Well, that's when you use a tuner. You can use a physical tuner like the one on screen. They'll generally set you back about $30 or even more popular these days is just to use an app for your phone. The app that I like to use is called ClearTune. You may have actually heard me talk about it before in other videos that I've made, but it's only about four US dollars on the App Store and it's available for both iPhone and Android. Now, the reason why I like it so much is it's very accurate and it has a very clear way of showing you your pitch. You'll notice on the top half of the screen, you have a fine tuner and that's modeled after the display you get on a physical tuner like the Korg I just showed you. 
So if you're playing a long note and the needle is at zero, you know you're perfectly in tune. If it moves to the right, you're playing sharp, meaning you're playing higher than the desired pitch. And if it moves to the left, you're playing flat, which is actually lower than the desired pitch. The pitch itself is measured in cents. And although we're always aiming for the absolute pitch, meaning that we're dead in tune, generally anything up to about five cents sharp or flat will be relatively imperceptible to the ear. Now, the only problem with that is if you're playing five cents sharp and your friend's playing five cents flat, that combined 10 cents of pitch discrepancy between you two will be noticeable, which is why we always aim for the very middle of the pitch. Now, for those interested, the space between semitones is always 100 cents. So if we were playing 50 cents sharp, we'd actually be exactly halfway between the note that we wanted and the semitone directly above it. Incidentally, that's also called a quarter tone. And in the case of that guy in the video, he was playing a lot of quarter tones. Now, below the fine tuner in clear tune, you'll see this tone wheel. This gives you another great visual representation of the pitch, albeit from a wider perspective. Here you can see exactly where we are in relation to the notes around us. If we purposely played flat, you'll notice us moving away from the note we want and closer to the note below us. So now that you understand how to properly read the tuner, I'm going to walk you through a great method for practicing your intonation. Firstly, we need to start with a reference pitch called a tuning note. For saxophone, we generally use a concert A, which is a B for soprano and tenor saxophones, and an F sharp for alto and baritone saxophones. Now, if you don't like dealing with the transposition from concert pitch, you can go into the settings of clear tune and select the right transposition for your saxophone. That's B flat for soprano and tenor saxophones, and E flat for alto and baritone saxophones. Now, when you play this tuning note, all you want to think about is using the most natural embouchure you can, so not too loose or tight with your bottom lip. Just play whatever comes naturally to you. And we're going to play this note with a tuner, so let's see how we go. So as you can see, the tuner just registered that note as being flat. But rather than make any embouchure adjustments just yet, what we're going to do is push the mouthpiece further onto the cork. That's going to make the whole instrument sharper. You see, by pushing the mouthpiece further onto the cork, what we're actually doing is shortening the length of tube that the air travels through. Therefore, it makes the pitch higher. Now, if for argument's sake, the tuning note we played was sharp, we'd want to pull out the mouthpiece and lengthen the tube, therefore making the whole instrument flatter. So let's try that tuning note again. Great, so you can see now that we've got that note in tune using the most natural embouchure we can. Now, it's important to note that it may take a couple of adjustments with the mouthpiece before you get the pitch in tune. You may find that you need to push in or pull out even further, or even that you overcorrected and need to split the difference somewhere. So, once it's in tune, you can actually get a pencil and make a marking on your cork where the end of your mouthpiece is. This will give you a rough idea of how far to push your mouthpiece on the next time you get out your sax to play. So just correctly setting up the mouthpiece doesn't guarantee that the whole instrument is going to play in tune, but this is where our embouchure adjustment comes into play. So if we go back to that D major scale, we can now try playing it again from the bottom to the top, but only advancing to the next note once we've played our current note dead in tune. Of course, for this exercise to work properly, we need the help of our tuner again. Now, Take your time with this. Don't rush through it. Make sure you get a good idea of what your embouchure feels like and how much pressure to use to get the very center of the note before you advance to the next note.
Now, if you start with this exercise and spend a few minutes on it every time you get out your saxophone to play, you'll slowly train yourself to make these embouchure adjustments on the fly to the point where you can make hundreds of small embouchure adjustments in any given song without really giving it any conscious thought. Now, one important thing to note is that when your saxophone is cold, particularly on a cold day before you've had a chance to warm it up, the whole instrument will play flat. As you play though, the instrument will get sharper as the saxophone warms up. So it's good to check in every now and then with your tuning note and a tuner to see where you are. Now, before we wrap this up, I mentioned at the start of this video that there are actually two important elements at play in the video of the soprano player that we watched. Number one was that he never developed the control over his embouchure to play in tune, which we've already covered. But equally as important is that it's clear he couldn't really tell that he was even playing out of tune. Just watch as his buddy leans over to him to tell him to stop playing. It's quite clear that he's in his own world in the moment and it's not really registering to him just how bad he really sounds. Because the other part to learning to play in tune is training your ear and developing the awareness when you play to hear the blend between yourself and the instruments around you. Now, of course, you might be sitting there thinking, how could he not have heard that? I could hear that and I'm only a complete beginner. But this is actually a common characteristic about learning an instrument. When we're focused solely on the mechanics of playing the saxophone, like making sure that our fingers hit the right notes at the right times, it doesn't always leave enough space in our brains to consider what we actually sound like in the moment. And if our ears aren't trained to just instinctively pick up on whether we're playing sharp or flat, we'll just keep on playing in blissful ignorance. Well, it's blissful for us maybe, but not so much for the people around us. So the best way to train your ear is to do a similar exercise like what we just learnt before, but instead of using a tuner, we're going to tune to a note, either played on piano or even in an app like ClearTune. So in ClearTune, if you select this pitch option, then use the tone wheel to select the note you want to play and hit the on button, you'll now get a tuning note to play with. In the Clear Tune app, it's just a pure electronic tone, but it's still good to tune to. Now, when you're playing in tune, the sound of the saxophone and the sound of the tuning note will blend together, just like this. But if we play out of tune, the two notes will bounce off each other and you'll hear this wobbly oscillating effect. So if you can hear that you're not in tune, the next thing to do is to adjust your embouchure or your mouthpiece on the cork accordingly. If you can hear that you're not in tune, but you're not sure if you're sharp or flat, that's okay. You can experiment with tightening or loosening your embouchure to see what effect it actually has. Inevitably, one of those two options will bring you closer to being in tune. Finally, there is another app I found you can use for the sole purpose of ear training and it's appropriately called InTune. It's free and it's been developed by researchers at Wittenberg University in Ohio. Basically, the app plays two notes and it quizzes you whether the second note was sharper or flatter. As you keep playing, the game gets harder and harder and the developers claim their research shows students who use the app improve their pitch discrimination at three times the rate of those who did not. So you might find that app useful as well. Well, that basically covers it for this intonation video, but remember that as with any new skill, intonation takes time to develop and the key of course is consistency. Just assign a small amount of time to it every time you practice your saxophone. If you have any questions for me, do leave them in the comment section down below. And remember, if you're just starting out on the saxophone and you're looking for some clear direction in your playing and a course to help you conquer this thing, check out the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. There's 12 lesson videos, a 68 page ebook and over 200 demo tracks and you can watch lesson one right here for free on YouTube and I've put a link to that 
in the description below. Or if you wanna just get straight into it, head over to SaxTuition.com to get the entire course and download it today. Well, thanks again for watching guys. Make sure to hit like and subscribe to the Sax Tuition YouTube channel for more great saxophone content. And of course, I'll see you all again soon.